Welcome traders to this week's live trade analysis session with me, Patrick Nunnally. Just going to give it another 30 seconds here before we get going. Um, if you could do me a favor, if you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, if you could type a Y into the chat box, that would be great so that I know we are set to start. Thanks very much. And that brings us to 2 p.m. UK time. And once again, welcome to uh, today's session. Before we get going, we just want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly for today's conversation, uh, the views expressed by me here today are solely mine. They're not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill Europe or Tickmill UK Limited. So for those that are here for the first time, a, a brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from King's College London, I joined the City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, quite literally at times overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or probably more appropriately day gambling, uh, the S&P 500. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six figure hit to my personal capital. Uh, to say that was a gut wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor uh, for a period of 18 months or two years, there was a time during which I had not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing uh, strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know that if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has uh, been profitable on an annual basis since 2008 and from 20. 13, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently man responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I am a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for three to five markets that I'm actively tracking, and they're all shared through the Tickmill TradingView accounts. I also run Tickmill's rapidly growing e-mini strategy Facebook group where I post a daily video outlining my pre-market trading plan for the cash trading session in New York. I give my bias for the day and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the markets. These pre-market plans have delivered over 1,850 points of profit since we launched the group last April. The second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The Tickmill Futures Trading uh, Telegram group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis, 
I share in-depth insights and analysis and live trades. I also live stream uh, during the opening hour of the cash session uh, where traders can essentially look over my shoulder and uh, I'm watching real time as I dissect the market and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These live trade sessions will ultimately help to act as a platform uh, to help traders develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets, and most importantly, the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. We will jump into the charts. I can see a few questions have come through here. Um, uh, Jess, I will post the, um, the link to the Facebook group in a second. There's the link for the Facebook group. You just have to request access. Uh, for those that are interested in learning more about the Telegram group, I suggest you uh, email me. Um, my email address is patrick.munnerly at tickmillpartners.com. And I can explain more about what we do there. The one requirement for the, um, the Telegram group is that you must have a futures account, a live futures account with, uh, with Tickmill. For the Facebook group, that's not uh, that's not it's, uh, necessary. It's just uh, you just have to request access to the group. Okay, so uh, let's jump into the charts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the main markets that I'm tracking at the moment, some of the setups that I'm uh, monitoring, and uh, and then at the end of the session, if you have any questions, I'll uh, I'll open up a brief uh, Q and A, um, or if there's any chart you'd like me to take a look at, I don't cover in the uh, in my presentation here then again we can look at those in the uh, in the q a so let's start with the s p 500 obviously we have been in a, a bit of volatility here sharp decline witnessed over january and we are now seeing a recovery uh, unfold or an attempt to recover um, one of the lines in the sand for me with respect to uh, whether or not we have seen a, a meaningful trading low and we're going to uh, retest price cycle highs and move higher still is really this 78.6% retracement of the current decline. You can see it here on the daily chart. We've also got this high volume node as well. So 46.85 is, uh, is the area of real interest to me. If we break through there, and get a couple of days close above that level, then I think we'll be going back to retest prior highs and en route to uh, to making new highs. The next target level then would be 49.70 on the, uh, the E-mini S&P contract. Um, for the near term, what I'm looking for is a, uh, is a trade, is a corrective move to unfold versus the swing high that we got uh, earlier this yesterday, uh, 45, 85, 45, 80. Um, what I'm looking for now is a three wave corrective move. And I'm going to be looking to get involved then on the long side, looking for. So at the moment, what I anticipate is something like this would be the ideal pattern. And then I'll be looking to uh, for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for an extension up into the uh, 46, 40, 46, 29 area. And that's also coincides with the underside of the trend line there, 4630s. And then from there, that's going to be, uh, that should complete an interim cycle. And then once again, what I'd be looking for would be another corrective leg, probably slightly larger corrective move to unfold um, and retest support back into the base there, 4446, before once again seeing if bulls are going to step back in and take, uh, take this higher. If we don't find support there, then we could be looking at the next leg to the downside and um, the target to, to the downside. If we do roll over, I'll be looking for a test of the 4,000 level as the next downside objective. But the interim setup for me here is going to be watching for a correction into this uh, 4507, uh, 4500 level and watch for bullish reversal patterns targeting a move back up through 4600. NASDAQ. Seen a bit of weakness, obviously, with uh, the Facebook earnings uh, coming out overnight, and uh, and they disappointed there. But we've got a similar structure in the Nasdaq here. So what I'm looking for is uh, any responsive action from uh, the support here at 4706. 
looking for a three-way corrected move before seeing if, uh, if buyers are going to step back in meaningfully to get a run up into uh, the 15,600 level will be the next objective. What I'm essentially looking at is this, to get these targets is the first leg off the low. Um, Elliot, if, you, if it's Elliot Wave, if you're uh, interested in that, that's obviously the wave one. And then when we get that wave four corrective low, or just the swing low here, um, I'm always looking for at a minimum for a, uh, a wave one extension to the upside to complete uh, to complete that initial uh, cycle here. So that's when I when I'm putting these measurements up. It's not that I'm just pulling them out, pulling these uh, levels out of thin air. I'm actually using uh, market moves to uh, measure where we're likely to end up and where moves are likely to terminate. And one of the things I'm always, also always tracking is momentum divergence. And so where we don't get meaningful momentum divergence, that then suggests to me that we were, that there's a high probability we'll see another high in this, uh, in this current leg. Uh, so that's what I'm looking at with the NASDAQ. Dow Jones, pretty well defined here. So with the Dow, I'm looking for pullbacks into uh, the support here at uh, 35,000. Again, ideally we get that in a three wave move and then we're looking for an extension to the upside. Uh, and I'm looking for a test here at the 36,000 level. You can also see on the daily charts, I've drawn this in uh, using the pitchfork, we have that projected uh, descending trend line resistance coming in at the 36,000 as well. And the 36,000 also equals 78.6% retracement of this, uh, this move to the downside. So that's going to be a key area when we test there, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns uh, to engage on the short side, certainly thinking about a move back down into test ascending trend line resistance uh, to the 34,000. Um, 34,800 level, and then we'll see how, how price responds once we uh, once we get down there. Similar story in the Russell. It's a little bit a uh, little bit more of an interesting pattern here for the Russell because we've got this uh, ledge, so to speak, that, uh, that we broke down from. The first retest of that should attract uh, some interest. So we want to pay attention to any move above 2100 level. And what I'm looking at now will be a three-way extension here. So if we can get a pullback in the Russell like so, and then we look for an equality objective to take us up into that 2100. And from there, we're then looking for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side uh, for a, a test back down. So 2100 is the area to pay close attention to on this Russell. And certainly if we get it in a three-way structure that will add additional confidence to the idea that the move is corrective and as such that we can see a resumption of the uh, of the current trend which is to the downside the dax <clears throat> so the dax uh, i i highlighted this earlier in the week in uh, in the trading view account, particular trading view account, I'll post a link to that at the end of the session. DAX has a similar setup to, uh, to the Russell. If we just go back to the Russell chart quickly. You can see we were in this broadening top pattern, uh, spikes the support zone, found one, one more leg to the upside and then rolled over. We can see that the DAX has a similar scenario developing here. We've got this, this ledge of support coming in just below 14,900. So what I'd, what I'd ideally like to see here with the DAX is just to see have we completed the measured move. So we have this swing low, this swing high. So we can see a little bit more strength here in terms of the DAX. We're holding in a holding pattern at the moment. So what I'd ideally like would be a move up into the 15,845. Got high volume node just above. 15,920. So I've been looking for bearish reversal patterns in this zone to, uh, to set short positions, targeting a spike of the lows at, uh, at 15,000 before we get another recovery, frustrating bears once more. And then I'll be looking for uh, the larger push to the downside, similar to that pattern that, um, that, we just, that I just highlighted in the Russell. So pay close attention to 15,800, which is the equality objective versus the current swing structure. 
And if we can get up into that area and watch for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, targeting a move down to the support at 15,000, potentially a spike of those lows. 10 year futures contract, 10 year notes in the US. Um, it's quite a clean uh, setup that I'm watching here. I'm looking for price to test the 128.27 level. I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side. So if we're shorting the, the, the treasury notes, we're anticipating that the yield is going to uh, rise. Price moves inversely to the yield. Obviously yields uh, are being closely monitored at the moment by all market participants as we uh, as we move towards the potential for this uh, this move in March from the Fed. So what I'm looking for ultimately is this 125, which represents the equality objective from the high here versus that swing low to that swing high. So 125.10 is the real area of interest. Now, um, the immediate tra trade for me to get involved in that is watching how we respond at 128.27. And here's the inverse of that chart with the 10 year yields. So we would be anticipating a break higher in yields, looking ideally for a test up towards the 2% level, which will broadly, co uh, <coughs> broadly coincide with that 125 low. And then I think we can see a bit more uh, corrective action, but you can see we've got a nice uh, triangle pattern developing here. So any break through the triangle um, would suggest that we are en route to, uh, to make this move to grind higher to the what uh, to the two percent level. Let's just the retracement tool. So we have uh, one point nine seven. Uh, one point nine four seven is the one two seven extension of this current consolidation pattern uh, an initial target. So what more often than not, what we get what we get when we uh, we get this breakout, we test the one two. We, uh, what I've been looking for is a test of the one two seven a pullback and then the extension up into the 161 target zone. And from there, I'll be looking for uh, a, a certainly a, a more su <coughs> sustained corrective move. And um, that would broadly coincide with that 125 test on the actual notes contract. Dollar index. So betwixt and between at the moment, um, what we're looking for, uh, I'm looking for this 61.8% retracement and the ascending Trend line 9830s to get tested. We've seen a bit of a pullback here um, in recent sessions, but ultimately now I'm looking for this move to develop in a three wave pattern that gets us down into the 9520s, which is a trend line support and in, interim trend line support. I'm looking for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side, uh, looking for that move up into the 9820s, 9830s. At this stage, we really need to see a close below this trend line. Um, and I really 94.60 would have to go um, to get meaningfully bearish on the dollar. I'm still looking for or anticipating that as we head into this, uh, this March meeting that we can see one more high in the dollar for this cycle um, as we get into that kind of buy the rumor, sell the fact type uh, setup into that meeting of the idea that we were up in testing this zone. And then I think we, could, uh, we can see some dollar weakness develop. Euro, obviously trading the inverse to the dollar. What I'm looking for in the Euro ideally is the test of the uh, descending trend line resistance here. Let me just pull up this and bring it in. We also have there the 78.6% retracement of the entire decline. So we are looking for this just above the 110 area to get tested. And then that should, that would broadly coincide then with the, the dollar achieving that, uh, that 98 objective. So I'm looking for one more leg of weakness here in the Euro uh, to give the, uh, the test of that 78.6% retracement. And then I, see, then I see the potential for a more meaningful bounce uh, to develop. So paying close attention to how price responds, we're checking back into the underside of the uh, prior support there. You can see we spiked it yesterday. We're seeing a bit of a reversal here today. Um, so we'll see if we can get follow through on the downside to set, uh, to set that test of, uh, of just above the 110 level before we get the, uh, the real sustained corrective move in, uh, in the euro.
see on the weekly chart, a bunch of trend line support coming in there as well. So that's going to really be a key area of interest and, and a, quite a significant inflection point, I think, for these, uh, these currency markets. Dolly, yeah. Sitting in a triangle, uh, not dissimilar to, to gold, more often than not, you'll find, bear with me, let me just turn that wire so it's off. Uh, you'll find that the um, they trade in, uh, in inverse fashion. But what we're looking at here with, uh, with the dollar yen is the potential now for a pullback to retest support here at the 113.69. And then from there, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a break. And uh, I actually have a target here on the uh, dollar yen. Let me bring this in for you. What we're looking for is an equality objective from this area here. So I'm ultimately targeting for this leg a test of 117.78. And again, if that if the dollar index can hold its support zone that I've highlighted, uh, that would coincide with the dollar yen doing this, having a similar setup. And we'll be looking to uh, to engage on the long side in the uh, in the dollar yen. Dollar CAD held the uh, held the trend line support that uh, I highlighted in uh, last week's session, or a couple or a few a uh, couple of weeks ago. So we have this trend line here, and. Uh, the, my only concern here at the moment for the dollar CAD is that the move from the lows looks uh, doesn't have really have impulsive qualities as such. It looks a bit more corrective because you can see we're actually coming in to test the equality objective here, um, which is the 128.80. So what I anticipate we see here is a, um, a move that tests up into that zone fails, pulls back, and then there is the potential that we can set an inverse head and shoulders pattern to, uh, to trade to the upside. At this stage, it was really going to, to get bearish the dollar cab for me anyway. Uh, we, we need to see a, a close below this trend line support. And that doesn't look like is uh, doesn't look like what we're going to be dealing with at this juncture. So um, I prefer here this inverse head and shoulders scenario. So watching any move back into 126.30s to get in on the long side, and we're going to look for uh, for a further upside extension in terms of the dollar CAD. Euro sterling, this one's interesting, as we have had uh, the BOE, obviously it's very ECB at the moment, um, and we have spiked into that descending trend line uh, support that I've been paying attention to. So I'm watching now to see if we can get a impulsive reaction here from the trend line. Otherwise, as you can see on the weekly chart on the, uh, on the top right there, any close through the 8280s will be a significant bearish development. And we have a gap down below us there at the 81 handle, which will be the next downside objective. So uh, watching carefully how price responds here, this is a pivotal level. If we break, we look for a, a follow through and then first pull back into this price support as resistance is a high probability scenario. Alternatively, we get a uh, an impulsive reaction here and, uh, and potential for a more meaningful bounce. So I'm paying close attention to your sterling over the coming sessions. Dollar, uh, sorry, sterling dollar. Um, what I'm anticipating here, we got uh, obviously the rate hike uh, in the UK this, uh, this afternoon, uh, but it's uh, looking like a bit of a buy the rumor, sell the fact type scenario here. So I'm paying close attention in, you can see we have a five wave structure here. So watching now for a pullback, which ideally will be in a three-way pattern like so. And then I think we can get a retest up into the prior highs here um, as this move looks uh, at the moment to, to be impulsive. And then we have the descending trend line resistance coming in 36.80. So 36.80, if we can get this, this pattern play out on the intraday, the four hour time frame, get that three-way correction, into uh, the 34, 135, 134, 90 area. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there uh, to engage on the long side, and we'll see if we eventually get a break of this, this triangle. Aussie. 
the Aussie is trading back in again to, let me draw this in. Looking for the Aussie to test, let's see. We want to see a test of this tra broken trend line support to act as resistance coming at 7200. So let's see if we've got a setup here. At the moment, we are holding the. Draw in what I'd like to see here. So ideally, what we see now with the Aussie is a three wave move that brings us back into test and hold the 77, uh, 7070 level, sorry. Um, and then we're looking for an upside extension up into that, uh, that 7290, 73 area. And that's going to be a decision point because if we can recapture um, prices above there and get acceptance above there, then we've got a trend line coming in back up towards 7450 on the Aussie. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how we respond if we get this pattern play out in the Aussie, we could have an opportunity there on the long side. Kiwi has completed the test of that equality objective pretty much to the pit there, uh, 65 50s on the, uh, on the weekly time frame. So what we're looking for now is a five wave sequence and we can track one essentially here. So ideally we get a new high now that takes us up into um, the weekly projected range resistance. Then we're looking for that three wave corrective pattern, ideally to test back into the 6611 area. And then what I'd be looking for would be an opportunity on the long side to initially play for an equality objective. And we've got that high, high volume node up at 6810. At this stage, uh, any loss of the lows back into that 6530, 6560 area would be a bearish development. And then we'd be thinking about a move down into the 6430s would be the next target on the downside, but uh, favoring an impulse setup here and a pullback to, uh, to do something on the long side. Gold, in that uh, continuing to frustrate traders in the triangle. Um, but for me at the moment, if we get a pullback into the 1786 level, I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns to actually engage on the long side, looking for a move up into projective sending trend line resistance that comes in at 1860s and uh, and see if we do ultimately get a breakout in gold if uh, if we do get a move let's just get a target level on there so you can see we have an equality objective up to 1940s as the first target in terms of a potential break of that triangle on gold uh, Let's jump to crude oil. This is one that I'm monitoring closely at the moment. The chart update. So we had a uh, potential for a wave three high to uh, to develop as we tested. We spiked towards the 90 level yesterday. Just waiting for the chart to update here. It's a little bit slow. Bear with me. What I'm looking for in crude now is, let me just show you, ah, it's updated. What I want to see is a move back into the 8260. So if I just scrunch the chart up a little bit, you'll see exactly the pattern that I'm tracking here. So we've got a potential wave three high as a wedge. So any corrections now, we look to fail here at the, uh, back into the, 89 handle and then we're looking for an extension to the downside to target 8260s and from there we'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns as we have the five equals one upside objective which would take us up into the 93 handle um, is the going to be the target to the upside if this pattern plays out so i'm watching for a break through this trend line support now to set up a move back into 82 80, 82, 60 area. And then I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side in terms of crude and Bitcoin.
Bitcoin is being rejected at the moment from that trend line again, but uh, it's not. Um, one second. Just waiting for this chart to update. Bear with me. So I think in the near term, there could be an opportunity here to play counter trend on the long side. Um, any pullbacks now that find support. So if we can get a bullish reversal from this uh, 35, 35,455, watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. And the initial target for that move is going to be quality objective at 41,200. Uh, that's one that um, I'm paying close attention to. So pullbacks now that find support, again, at the 35,500 level are an opportunity on the long side targeting 41,200. At this stage, it would take a loss of the prior lows at the 33,200 to set up the move to get the test here and uh, below of sub 30, uh, so, sorry, of sub, 30,000, and I'd be expecting some uh, support to develop there in terms of Bitcoin. But in the, the immediate setup here for me is, uh, is a hold of support here and an extension to the upside. So those are the, uh, the markets that I'm tracking at the moment you know, where I see uh, opportunities. Uh, I'm going to be active, obviously, this afternoon in the S&P 500 in the E-mini strategy group. Uh, Thanks very much, Jess. Any questions, or would anyone like me to take a look at a market that I, uh, that I haven't covered? Equally, if you don't have a question, uh, if you type an N in the chat box, that's just as helpful. So I know I've done a reasonable job of explaining everything and uh, we can wrap the session up here. The, uh, the, yeah, the Facebook, um, to access the Facebook group, just use the link and send a request and I'll, uh, I'll add you into the group. Okay, can't see any other questions, so I'm gonna wrap this session up here. Thank you very much for the time and uh, hope you found this useful. As always traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.